still an ongoing challenge. Yes. Um, yeah, question for UCSD and Irvine and whoever else is working on a functional based um, organization. So we're doing this at Davis, and um, it's very encouraging to hear your experiences and we're finding that a lot of our hopes and aspirations and fears are being realized and what you've done. But I'm wondering if we could take an umbrella perspective now and if you could say whether you find the functional structure um, an improvement over the old disciplinary structure or not. I mean, you've mentioned <laughs> a number of problems, and it's not clear if they're a part of the transition to the new structure or if they're inherent in the new functional model. Yeah, it still feels like we're in transition. It still feels like we're learning the roles. And I mean, again, I, I'm hopeful that, that some of the the roles and responsibilities, like there's, you know, a lot of literature about this sort of structure and, and the role of ambiguity and like, you know, I think if we start to, to answer some of those questions where it's like, oh, okay, this person's working on this and so then I don't want to have to worry about it or I think that will alleviate some of it, but um, it's, I, I, I would say it's really hard to say better, you know, like I think it's just different, you know, it's, it's a change. That we're doing. <laughs> I, don't, I think there's, there's, there's why ask that question. It's done. You know, yeah. it's done. We're in this new world. Um, so I, I'm at that point. I think I'm in that stage where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm in this new world. Let's go. Let's I've often asked the question of what is just a, function of, a product of the change and what is the actual the result? Like, you know, like this is this, even if the, the end product is a ton better than the beginning, it's going to be hard to get there yeah. just because. Transition is hard, and getting a new supervisor is hard, and finding a new place to work is hard, new colleagues you're dealing with every day is hard, even if the end is going to be better. So how much of it is based on just changing, and how much of it is, this was a bad idea? And, and, and it's kind of hard to split that up right now, because like Christelle said, we're still really changing. I think there's some good ideas behind what we did. I think there were some necessary ideas based on the budget, and I don't, I personally don't disagree with the idea of centralizing a lot of the functions we did. Um, some of the decisions, specific decisions, might not have been the best, um, and, and, and I do think they're starting to change a little bit and go back and, and rethink. Um, so I'm hoping in the long run it'll be worth it. The, the transition status check, I think, was very critical for us to, to at you know, a six-month mark, start talking about like, what's working and what's not working. I, I think if we hadn't done that, yeah, that was good. We, I think there would have been a lot more frustration building up and just you know, in general. So I think to be able to see some of that has been good. So. And just that was actually a suggestion from a librarian. Admin wanted to wait a year. <laughs> we were like, no. Yeah, so again, speaking yeah. up, I think has been a huge thing that we're learning that we need to be a part of that process. We can't wait to be asked what we actually need to say when we think something needs to happen. Yeah, so the urban experiences, I think the functional structure helped us, particularly when we had uh, openings in Positions. So it was a workload issue and something that I could separate out and say, I'm going to do less collections because I need to do more instruction. And were, it's something you could say, I'll move this off to somebody else or the, the department will take care of it. Uh, I think you know, librarians feel like there's a lack of specialization. And it's good to have people with strong domain knowledge and experience to work um, effectively with departments. That's not really the emphasis as much as I think the administration would like us to be completely interchangeable. So uh, once one size fits in every place, we can do everything. If I was a music librarian, all I could literally do is turn on the lights and set up circulation. And after that, I'm not really effective. Because even if I'm a fan, I don't have that experience. If you put me around physicists and mathematicians and chemists, I understand what's going on in the functional part also allows us to bring colleagues in from different areas to say, I will help you with the, the subject information. You will help me with all of the other stuff that goes in. And I think that's what has been helping with our scholarly communications work. I have liaisons who are talking to the departments, because that's their face. I can help them with the infrastructure. And if we go back to focusing on the, the, the material that's being the new subject to work with, but there's this there's this uh, support system that surrounds them. Getting that to work on an ongoing basis, I think, is one of those culture shifts within the library. And, it's, and, uh, and it still depends on having enough people to be able to do all of this work. 
Otherwise, you're just sort of moving the napkin around the table. It doesn't cover the entire surface, but as long as it covers what you need, it seems to be like it's working okay. So just in time or just enough, but it doesn't necessarily satisfy it. So my final question. So well, I tell you, I would like to hear your comment on that. Because actually, what you just described, I think, is what a lot of you folks would want. Now, Santa Barbara is smaller than some of the others, so we've had a functional approach for forever, I believe. So, um, uh, but having um, functional expertise like telecommunication and to be able to connect that with others who have disciplinary expertise is exactly what a functional model is trying to get at, to be able to slice hand up. So, in a team based approach. Well, and I, I think the, in the opening remarks, this was touched on, and then you kind of touched on it too. I think the, the trend of, of knowing that what a librarian does and what kind of skills we bring to the table in our specializations versus, like, I think there is a trend to, to be hiring staff to do things that librarians are doing. So, I mean, I think that's something that we do need to be concerned with and we need to, need to pay attention going forward because I do think there's stuff that staff bring and then I think there's stuff that librarians bring in. So, that's that's something we've talked a lot about in Climate Call too, is like when there are distinctions, there needs to be distinctions between the librarian's role and non-librarian's role, and I think that's something we're gonna still have to work on a lot to, to kind of shake out going forward. <laughs> so, you almost actually read my mind, because my question was really about the, the need to make an argument in the case for bringing our numbers back up in all the different areas of library work, whether it be paraprofessional staff and a professional. And the new functional models, you know, they may actually help justify additional positions because suddenly, as Mitchell described, moving the napkin around, that's the big question. We've shrunk in numbers on in all campuses, but you know, some campuses like Irvine. There's a promise to have 300 new faculty in five years, but I would like to see, you know, an equal promise of new librarians and new staff uh, at a, you know, a respectable ratio in proportion to the incoming students and the classes being taught. So, have you had experience in being able to parlay this new functional design, a new vision, or uh, windows of of gaps? and saying, yeah, we need no new people in these areas, and you're seeing new jobs being created. Well, Irvine, we've had this discussion with her, you will. To her credit, she was very open about things that I, I wasn't aware of, but this is what the ULs have to think about. They have a budget, they get this from the campus, where well, the campus is open, the funding them for it. And then she explained where the money comes from. Open positions or lapsed positions. If she wants to fill this going forward and she wants to build in areas, that means she's going to have to tax it from other departments. So it could be she goes to a department head and they're going to pay you and say, We're going to support this new position, but that means there's going to be less money for something else. So where am I going to pull that from? So it could be that she's got a balloon, she's trying to push it in different directions. Some stuff is going to push out in other areas, it's going to get smaller elsewhere. That's not getting any bigger. We continue to raise these, these concerns about areas that we need for ongoing personnel, but some new areas as well. And I, I know my I know she's taking it in, I know she's been working through priorities. I'm hoping that she can then turn around and convince the, the campus that this is valuable. And I think the leverage that we have, some of those numbers help. This is the vision for the campus. If you're really going to grow that much, you've got to have somebody to support that area. And this is what we've been able to do with our current staff, but this is what we need going forward. She's going to advocate for that. The other administrators are going to advocate for it. It's up for us to try to be able to put as much of that on the table as we can. I haven't seen any new positions so far. We're still waiting to fill some permits. And, well, and, well, and to follow up on that, uh, Denise was successfully advocated for three during positions focusing on data creation. So, so new positions. Would 
hiring a number of positions, but it's really based on the fact that we haven't done it in years, and so they, they, they waited until the real world to identify what the right gaps would be. Um, some of it has to do with the fact that there's a new role in librarianship, like data, that we didn't really have a specialist in. So I don't know if anything's resulted in opening anything up because of the new way we reorganize, just with a bunch of other things that we all have. Um, I just have a, a comment about what actually everybody just said. Um, at Riverside, we um, uh, we obviously are looking at new areas that libraries are um, active in, and what we've noticed in the past two years, and our new UL is still in, I think, his honeymoon period. So we got two new positions last year and one this year, and they are not in data management, grant support, and all the other things. They're all in very discipline-specific areas because I think that's, unfortunately, what our campus understands best because it speaks to the faculty. We got a bioengineering position last year, a medical librarian position last year, and this year, not everybody knows this yet, but we got a GIS librarian um, for next year. We actually got instruction coordinator last year at our no, not a new positions. Those were not new positions. These are new money. Those were those are money that was that we moved the budget around and so on. These are this is new money. This is not replacing anything, which is like the best we can get. But they're discipline specific, and um, so what what we do is we manage to pay. I think in general the things that they don't understand quite as well. We figure out other ways to pay for and sell the ones that we think that they will sell to the campus. Yes. So we have two, like five minutes left, so I just want to take a couple more questions, and I think Jessica and just three, I guess. Okay, I'll just um, quickly some more comments um, based on the functional model. So um, it sounds like functional models require a lot of collaboration, and that's the trend right now in libraries. Um, we see it throughout our strategic plan draft. And there's nothing wrong with collaboration. I'm a very social person. I like collaboration. I work better in teams. However, I think that one thing to remember about collaboration is the human aspect of it, that not everybody is social. Not everybody has the same interests, goals, and desires to get something done. And it can be hard to collaborate um, and achieve one goal if people prioritize things differently. So if there's something that needs to be done in one area, and you need, to, you need to work with another functional department, that doesn't mean that they're that priority. So does that come into play? Is there conflict in that way? Because I can totally see that happening. It's just human nature. Yeah, the, so I, I work in the digital library development program, and so we collaborate quite extensively across the library, and so we are constantly hitting that priority wall. Um, and so we, we've had to come up with lots of different mechanisms of creating roadmaps and you know just different ways of, of trying to figure out like okay this is these are our priorities how does it fit in with these other priorities and competing interests and um, you know the creation of a research data curation program then competes with my digital library project it's like wait a minute you know we're all taking from the same resources so we've had to figure out and negotiate um, quite a bit and it does result in a lot more meetings a lot more discussion and um, that can be way down on you. But again, I, I think product-wise, we're then more appreciative and we're getting a good output. Um, but it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I know we you know, run into the same problem with work, work priorities and our project priorities don't necessarily mix. What's been helpful is um, it's really sort of a hook. We can demonstrate the other department's value what they're doing because they're collaborating outside of their their silo. So in a sense, it's, that's the carrot for them to want to work with us. We bring them an idea. They have the infrastructure. Let's put it together. It works for everybody. Uh, we try not to balance. We try to balance that against what we can hope to get, and maybe we have to make the project a little bit smaller or phase it in. We've had some really interesting ideas that then she worked. So she had an idea to do a metadata. Uh, tagging game for special collections is a way of also getting people interested in the library and it demonstrated as a concept this is something that could be helpful going forward 
and it landed enough hooks in the people who saw it to say, I like that. I think there's something really interesting that's worth doing, and it, and it demonstrated its own value for doing that. So and I think going forward, people said the door is open. Let's do more of that. So some of these are trying to get it done in the beginning, and then trying to convince people it's worthwhile. It doesn't be easier when we ask them the next, for the next project. This is just kind of a follow-up to the inverse of what Michael was saying. At, at UCLA, not only are we having a, a contraction of um, librarians due to attrition and, and, and moving onwards, but we also are having a, um, a contraction and true attrition of um, major faculty in major departments. And I've spoken to faculty in sociology and in history, and um, they're, I mean, part of their plan is for their, because of the budget cuts, that they're going from, say, 60 lab faculty down to 40 lab faculty. And these are major, major, um, major departments for us. At the same time, though, we're seeing a major increase in our undergraduate population. So this <coughs> third year in a row where we have over 6,000 incoming freshmen, how do you deal with that? I mean, that puts um, a, 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 a challenge to the, um, those who work with undergraduate especially instruction, especially research. And then um, we also, I'm sure everybody here is dealing with a major increase in international students who have their own um, needs and things that we have to, uh, to satisfy for them. So there's a whole shift um, of needs and, and, and it's obvious that there is, we're in the midst of transition where you're just gonna have to look at the way we do everything and kind of step back and, and well, how can we do this best? I also wanted to ask um, if, if somebody asked if you had input from people outside the library at the beginning of your changes, have you had um, a chance to do any assessment, spoken to faculty, spoken to student groups, and in, um, after the changes have been implemented or while you're in the transition? Initially, you said you surveyed faculty. At what point did you do this? And what kind of input are you getting from your primary users in light of the changes that you've made? I think the first faculty survey was in 2011. I think it was during, right after the, the big changes in closures and some of the collection adjustments in 2010-11. Uh, we had a campus survey for uh, research computing. Uh, it, it followed something that San Diego did when they uh, surveyed faculty about interest. We, managed to enlarge that to, to include some library questions. It hasn't been systematic in terms of asking uh, student groups or other faculty more targeted. My feeling is our UL is probably going to raise that question for the fall going forward. I think she wanted to be able to balance that, have some, some success stories, and then survey sort of them again to see if it's changed since the last readjustment. I know with our new chancellor, There's concern that um, the new financial structures for how the campuses deal with money are really going to influence some of those discussions. So our, our UL was really conscious of the fact that she has to sell the product in a different way. So my guess is we're, we're going to probably be asking those survey questions. Okay, one last question. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Riverside and ask, uh, also other panelists if you have thoughts. Um, so it sounds like over 50% of your labor librarians here are managers. Um, that sounds kind of scary to me. So is that a tumor? So if it's considered as a tumor, then how? What, what, what is the? What might be the cure? It's I don't know. If, I just want to hear like your thoughts. On it. I really haven't thought of to assess that. I don't feel that I can say anything about that. Um, other than there's a lot of that do a lot of work in the library that um, is possibly very difficult to other levels of the library. I think that, you know, we do partially have a management silo, and part of it's the style of the managers. It's just, you know, it's a little different than what I would consider standard to see library culture. Yeah, but I think, you know, people are slowly open. so few of us left, you have to have at some point. You know, who 
whose votes stand. So if you have four tiers of authority to make the silliest little decision, you know, then you're just totally stabbed and you're dead. But I think people maybe are waking up to that kind of big problem. And maybe we'll see the management side of it open up a little more than it has been. Would anyone else make a comment? I just want to see the last one. <laughs> I'll comment because uh, the, the number of people at Santa Barbara with supervisory responsibility to me is, is rather high. Um, uh, the, the snapshot is from several months ago, so the numbers have changed, but it was 62 out of 147 library employees have supervisory responsibility. And for me, that just the management of the training for them was a, a difficult thing to approach. And I'm, I'm having our learning organization librarian and our uh, director for HR focus on um, requiring training for all supervisors, including those with students. And we're actually doing a special program just for supervisors, uh, supervised only students, because that's about half of us. And, and even though here, which is the Higher Education and Employee Relations Act, does not define student employees as employees <coughs> for supervisory account, I still think that they're employees. So it's something that it's something that I'm taking a look at every time one of those supervisory positions comes up and up. I'm taking a look to see if we really need it as a supervisor. So one to follow up, this is uh, Coach. So I actually just got a forward from a lot of parliamentarian about a book uh, written by, uh, I guess, a faculty of Johns Hopkins talking about the expansion of administration throughout higher education. Um, so this is, of course, again, the whole phenomenon is way beyond us. So there are any number of reasons that are complex, but it's like all of libraries is just one corner of the universe where this is happening. There are lots of reasons for it. Okay. Uh, please round of applause for all our.